And I'd like to bring in a guest now to talk more about uh, what could have happened earlier this week and, and also what could have been done to prevent it. Greg Schlesinger is an attorney specializing in construction defects. I uh, appreciate your time tonight, Greg. Good evening. Talk about this 2018 report, what you have heard and what concerns you about what we've learned today. Well, there were clear uh, indications of a structural defect in the building, and uh, there was a failure to address those defects and uh, adequately explore the level of deterioration in the building's uh, structure, both the concrete and steel that makes up the structural support of the building. So when those types of defects are identified, what is the process in rectifying that situation and what kind of time frame are buildings and the associations under to make those changes? Well, what should have been done is more exploratory work should have been conducted, destructive testing in and around the areas to see to what extent those clear signs of structural defect had occurred. That wasn't done. And they had waited three years and still had not performed adequate investigation to determine how bad those defects affected the overall structural integrity of the entire building. Talk to us about the constructual defects. Uh, what specifically are the largest concerns when you read through that report and what you've learned about this particular building? It, it's simple. Um, this is a structural element that's made out of concrete and steel. Clearly, through the spalling, the steel had deteriorated to such a level that the concrete was falling off of columns, off of slab sides, and it was indicative of a serious structural defect in the building. Failure to investigate additionally and just to allow that structural defect to exist without being addressed for three years has led to uh, just a collapse of a building and a catastrophe that could have been avoided. And only 15 seconds left, Greg. Whose responsibility is it to address those issues when they came to light? Well, certainly the uh, building owners, the maintenance companies, the engineering companies, anyone involved in uh, the repair of it, uh, those individuals who knew or should have known of this structural defect are responsible for the situation we're in today. Greg Schlesinger, an attorney specializing in construction defects. Thank you for your time and for your insight tonight, sir. Sure. Good evening.